it really is fascinating to look at dating apps and uh, LinkedIn next to each other because I kind of did got on both at like the exact same time in college. They sort of ro- arose at the same time. I think LinkedIn came out a few years before. So I started with this professional image and I started crafting it and like building a website and having my business cards, which in college business cards, crazy, but like I had business cards that matched my resume, that matched my website, that matched my LinkedIn. And I was like putting all these pieces together and I was still like, you know, not every company wanted to work with me. And I was like, how is this possible? Like I'm doing everything I can. And like, and then it goes a step further into your personal life. So it's like, okay, at least this is my professional image. Everyone has a professional image. You're a little bit different at work than you are at home. Obviously, you're not going to be making the same jokes with your brothers as you would with your coworkers, like all these different things, right? And so there's a little bit of a separation of church and state in, in, the, in the job world. And people can put forth a bit more of a professional image. But in the dating world, it was raw. It was just, this is who you are and people are rejecting you. And it's like, ah, crap. And it's like, And that starts, but what I found so fascinating as these two worlds started to evolve next to each other is that the job search world became much more like dating and the dating world almost became much more like a job search. And first dates became interviews where you're like, I've talked about these five things and and like, I have to get all my like deal breakers out the way. And I got to like, I got 20 people I got to go on dates with. So we got to move Here's, through here are my love languages. What are yours? Oh like, my gosh. What's like, your ideal? You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I put like my personality type in my profile at one point. Like, it's just yeah. like that. <laughs> I had it in my dating profile and in my LinkedIn. And it's like, what am I doing here? Am I auditioning for jobs yeah. while dating? It's crazy. Yeah. And like, and then it's funny to like, take 10 steps back and look at how I actually got success in my love life and in my career. Always people that I met in person through activities that I enjoyed. And so like, (laughs) when you really break it, and I'm like, how much time did I waste on these profiles and this like image of myself and, and all these different things. And then like, and then it brings up this heightened imposter syndrome because you've put a version of yourself out there that doesn't match who you are. And that was a big thing that I had to go through when I, my first business went under. I had built this entire reputation around being an entrepreneur. I quit my job to become an entrepreneur and I did all these things. And like, some of it was me fronting. Some of it was like all my coworkers being like, oh my God, you're doing this crazy thing. And like, it really built it all up. And I just remember hitting a point when, when the business went under and I read Ego is the Enemy um, by Ryan Holiday. And I just went like, I'm trapped in an image. Like I was wearing a vest. I had like my hair a certain way. I had certain glasses. I like was a caricature of myself. And Mm -hmm. I actually went through this like long phase of like changing everything, of just like destroying that entire image in order to rebuild something a bit more authentic. And I think one of the hardest parts of all this is like the keywording and the algorithms and the ATS and all this stuff. It's, it's, almost constructing an ego you could never live up to. And Mm. the imposter syndrome that comes along with that, I think is so damaging to people. And I'm curious, like when you Mm. see imposter syndrome come up, what does it look like on the dating side? um, And how do people deal with it? Well, do you want to take a guess the average amount of time that goes by before people break up? When you start newly dating somebody. Oh God, I have no, I'm guess. like so sad How many and scared. Months? One. Three. Three, okay. People, people can only, so I, you're going to hear about like new relationship energy or things like that. Or now there's like love bombing and that's a whole other thing. You can only keep up a mask of your authentic self. Whatever thing you're you're trying to promote to that you're, you're sure this is this is the way to be in order for someone to love you for three months. And after that, boy, are you tired? This is, this is also a reason why, you know, people, you know, love at first sight or whatever people warn you of like, Hey, before you move in with somebody before God, you get engaged or married to somebody like give it a minute because the biological, like the actual hormonal, uh, uh, scientific 
feeling of love lasts at most two years. And I don't mean that's a scare of like nobody's in love. No, but it's important. Like you need to get along as people. You need to get along as friends. There's so many other factors because that rush is gonna end. And I'm not saying that there isn't ways to like, you're not gonna stop loving somebody or whatever. You, you know what I mean? But, but, but that rush of like, oh, they're perfect. Da, 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 da. Honey, that you're, that those shades in your eyes are gonna come off after at least two years. Those <laughs> love goggles are gonna come those down. Those love yeah. goggles are gonna come off. And then you're gonna be like, oh, this is a really annoying habit of theirs. <laughs> or like, oh, I don't really like these parts. Um, but yeah, the average, uh, the average time is about three months for the most. Now people can have this kind of fake persona. And, and just, I want you to continue that point, but just to add Please. in some flavor, that's exactly the same thing with this dream job BS that everyone's yeah. talking about. Cause everyone's yeah. like, as soon as I get that job, everything's going to be fixed. I'm like, yeah, for a month or two. And then you're going to hate your boss. And then the whole cycle starts again. Uh, but yeah. keep going with what you're saying. That's fine. That's why like, as I say again and again, the most important thing you can do on both sides of both activities writing down like really searching within yourself and writing down what you want like what are the what are the key features of a person you know that you you care about and it can't be looks on it can't be looks those fade okay has to be has to be qualities um and limit to yourself to like three or five you know let's not let's not run a laundry list but having those key features because that's going to help you um know what to ask for on apps, like no, no, uh, you know, help that other person be able to connect with you, um, who, who has those things. And I know we've talked about like authenticity. I think, um, I, I, I definitely feel a lot when you're talking about like, oh, I did this like character version of myself. So I honestly, I did stand up for years and I've been a performer forever. And that persona, cause it is a persona, honey would carry over in my relationships mm -hmm. to the point that I had somebody break up with me because of it. And I didn't understand it. And a friend was like, dude, were you aware of how you were at like the restaurant? We were all together. Like you were on, it was all da 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 da. And I was like, oh yeah, that's really annoying. And yeah. it's not who I am. Cause like that, that was a comment I'd get a lot of the time. Like I'm actually like, yes, I'm a performer, blah, blah, blah. I'm a very quiet person. And so, you know, people would be like, oh, Amory's, Amory's, you know, laugh a minute, da, da, da. And they'd go on a vacation with me or something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I'm fun for about a day. And then I won't say anything for the next four days. Well, and <laughs> you, and you hear that like, all the time about performers, right? Yeah. You hear it about like oh. John Mulaney. You hear it about like mm -hmm. all these performers that you would oh, yeah. think would be a riot to hang out with. No. And like Andy Samberg, like I know someone who's Mm -hmm. sister is married to his whatever it doesn't matter oh, wow. yeah, but the yeah. whole some, thing some... is like they're like at the christmas dinner he just he didn't say a word it's like yeah that makes about sense and like and i do think that what you're saying here is so important for people to realize is like the internet is encouraging you over the last five to ten years to yep. be authentic yeah. and there is two ways to go with that the one way is to be truly authentic. And then you really have to not care about likes yeah. and follows and all the engagement and all that, that stuff, which is incredibly difficult to do. Or you have to be authentic and live up to this image you create for yourself, which yeah. no one can do. Like even the best performers, like that's why there's so much abuse, like drug abuse and stuff like that, because people are so stressed out because they can't maintain the facade in a way.